This is how we're gonna do it. We're gonna start with the Game Awards 2020 Best Esports Team first. So... I never play League of Legends, Call of Duty, or Overwatch. I have played League of Legends and Overwatch. Well, technically I've played Call of Duty 2, one game. Uh, called Advanced Warfare, I think, back in the day. But that's, that's about it. I don't have much knowledge, but again, it's just going to be predictions of best esports team recognizing a specific esports team not the full organization judged the most outstanding for performance and conduct in 2020 so dota 2 i've played a lot of if you know me you know i played like 2700 hours of dota 2 so <laughs> i'm gonna be a little bit biased here so I've never heard about Dam One Gaming, Dallas Empire, G2 Esports. I'm, I might might have heard about those actually. San Francisco Shook, Shock. Never heard about them, but I've heard about Team Secret, which is here. Dota 2. I've played Dota 2 in the, in the past, and Team Secret. I actually know who this is. That's Puppy. He's the captain of the team. He normally plays like the captain role and support for the most part. So I know these guys and and Zai. So I'm gonna go with Dota 2 here and Team Secret for best esports team. That's just my prediction, biased prediction. So it's gonna be kind of funny, fun to see what the results are. If I might get like literally everything wrong after this, these game awards are are done. So. Gonna be fun to see. Let's go to the next one. Best esports host. So I know a couple of these guys and gals. Golden Boy is actually the this guy is the Woodface emote on Twitch, by the way. Woodface. I know about him, but I've never really seen him cast too much or host machine I've seen a little bit of I, th I think he's done some Dota 2 but not not too much I haven't seen too much shocks I, I know about her but I haven't seen much dash I've not seen anything uh, of him hosting but I've seen Sheber Jorin van der Heiden, I've seen her cast a lot of Dota 2. So, another biased prediction. Sheber, that's what I'm gonna go for. He's gonna win this category, the best host or commentator of esports events, both in venue and or broadcast in 2020, irrespective of game or language. So, Sheber, that's my prediction here. And then we'll go to best esports game. For the game that has delivered the best overall esports experience to players, inclusive of term tournaments, community support, and content updates, ir irrespective of genre or platform. Okay. So we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Counter Strike, Fortnite, League of Legends, and Valorant. So I don't really play any of these games at all. I have played Counter Strike the most of these games in the past. So, and I played a little bit of Le Lego Legends, but I went straight back to Dota 2. <laughs> and nothing of Call of Duty, other than Advanced Warfare campaign. Never played Fortnite, never played Valorant. So I'm gonna go with uh, Counter-Strike Global Offensive Valve, I think. Oh, wait. Maybe I should stop being biased, having the biased prediction if I don't do a bias prediction I guess League of Legends might win so I'm gonna go with League of Legends I think I think so yeah, okay we'll, we'll go with League of Legends if I was biased it would have been Counter-Strike 
that won would have won best esports game. But yeah, I'm gonna go with League of Legends as a prediction. So next. Best esport event. Recognize an event across single or multiple days that delivered a best of class experience for participant and broadcast audience. Blast Premier, Call of Duty League, IEM Katowice, League of Legends World Championship, and Overwatch. Uh, I have no idea actually, so I'm just gonna go with League of Legends actually. Just, I'm trying not to, like if I would, was biased it would have been uh, CSGO, I guess, but one of these, but what I think will win, League of Legends. World Championship 2020, this one. Alright. Best esports coach, another one I don't know too much about. Esports coach judged to be the most outstanding for performance and conduct in 2020. Uh, Sonic, Krusty, Grabs, Sepha, and Rambo. <laughs> Rambo. Uh, Danny Sørensen. He seems Scandinavian. So I'm gonna... Uh, another bias pick. CSGO, Sonic. That's what I'm gonna go with. <laughs> Here we go. Best esports athlete. Uh, I don't know any of these guys, actually. Esports athlete, judged to be the most outstanding for performance and conduct in 2020, irrespective of game. There's no Dota 2. If, the, if there was Do a Dota 2 uh, athlete, I would have... Uh, Esports athlete, I would have probably <laughs> chosen them. So, I don't know. Crimson Showmaker Canyon. Shotzi, Saiwu. I think I'm gonna go with some... One of these Lego Legends. Either Showmaker or Canyon. For like, just popularity in general. And a lot of those guys are really extremely good. So... I'm just gonna go with uh, Showmaker actually. Showmaker. On this one. And now we're on to games. Best debut game for the best debut game created by an independent studio, a new independent studio. So we have Carrion, Mortal Shell, uh, Raji, Rocky, and Phasmophobia. Let's see. So I've seen some of Carrion and Mortal Shell. Mortal Shell is kind of like a Dark Souls-ish, Dark Souls-like game. And um, Carrion is like 2D and you play like a monster alien, I think. You play like a monster alien that is trying to like devour humans. <laughs> Kind of interesting, actually. And Röki, I've not seen at all. Looks interesting just from this picture, though. And Phasmophobia, most people know what Phasmophobia is. It's that uh, ghost game where you you play with other people as multiplayer. Play with other people, and there's one ghost and five people, I think. It's kind of like a multiplayer horror game. But I don't think that will win, even though I think Phasmophobia is the most popular, best, or mo most popular debut game. Because it's not just a popularity vote, this, the Game Awards. It's also like critics plus popularity, popularity votes. So we're gonna go with... Um, I'm 
We're gonna go with Carrion. I just have a feeling of, of uh, pr prediction there. Not biased at all. Actually not biased. I'm, I'm not being sarcastic. Uh, I haven't even played it, but I've seen it. I've seen this and this and Phasmophobia. But I think Carrion's gonna win that. Pretty interesting, like, gameplay and art style. From a new independent studio. Let's go up here. So we have Content Creator of the Year. Why am I not there? I'm kidding. <laughs> For a streamer or content creator who has made an important and positive impact on community in 2020. Oh, that's why I'm not there. Okay. That's why I'm not there. Like, positive and important impact on the community in 2020. Okay, okay. I got, I got you. Uh, Alana Pierce, J.N. Lopez, Nick Merckx, Tim the Tatman, and Valkyrie. So I know she's really popular. Well, all of them probably are. I just haven't heard about J.N. Lopez. That's the only one I have not heard about. Which means I'm going to predict her. <laughs> I'm going to predict J.N. Lopez. I've heard about Al Alana Pierce. She's actually in Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, or it's going to be December 10th. I don't know if that's even going to be a thing. It might be delayed for the fifth time. Nick Merckx. Very popular serving on Twitch. Same with Tim the Statman. And Valkyrie I haven't heard too much about. But I've heard about everyone else except J.N. Lopez. So I'm going to say... I'm going to predict content creator of the year J.N. Lopez, actually. I just have a good feeling there. For some reason. Best multiplayer back to games. For outstanding online multiplayer gameplay and design. Including co-op massively multiplayer experience. Experiences irrespective of game genre or platform. So what sticks out to me immediately is Among Us and Fall Guys immediately. For best multiplayer. But we have Animal Crossing New Horizons. I've seen some of that actually. And a lot of people love that from Nintendo. And we have Among Us from In the Sloth, which is like a very small development studio, I think, that has like the biggest game on Twitch, almost. Or it has been for a while now. Uh, when it comes to multiplayer, Call of Duty Warzone. So, yeah, Call of Duty is always gonna be popular. And Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout and Valorant for best multiplayer. I think Fall Guys is gonna win that. Honestly. I think Fall Guys is gonna win several things. Several awards this year. So I'm, I'm just gonna go with Fall Guys as a prediction there. Best sports and racing game. For the best traditional and non-traditional sports and racing game. So we have Dirt 5, which is like a rally game. Formula 1 2020. FIFA 21. NBA 2K21. And Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1, 1 and 2. This here is a remake. Or remakes. So not necessarily new. But these games are not necessarily new either. Per, like th these games are just updates roster. And it's essentially just like a small remaster of the previous year. In a way. <laughs> and th then they might add new modes. Like story mode or something like that. I don't know about the F1 and Dirt 5, but... Best traditional and non-traditional sports in the racing game. I'm just gonna guess... Even though Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2... Those are remakes. I'm gonna guess Tony Hawk. Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. And that's my prediction for best e or best sports racing game.
best sim strategy. Best game focus on real time or turn based simulation or strategy gameplay, irrespective of platform. So we have Crusader Kings 3, I've seen some of that. Desperados 3. I was actually, I think I was gonna play that, but I just, I just didn't. And then I forgot, forgot about it. <laughs> so I haven't really seen too much of it either. Gears Tactics, I've seen some of that. I've seen, seen even more of Microsoft Flight Simulator. An XCOM Chimera Squad. I have a feeling either Crusader Kings 3 or Microsoft Flight Simulator is going to win that. From just looking at it right now. So I'm, I'm actually going to go with uh, for best sim strategy. I'm going to predict Microsoft's Flight Simulator. That's very sim. That's a very sim game. Next. So we have best family game. The best game appropriate for family play, irrespective of genre or platform. Animal Crossing New Horizons. Crash, Bandic Crash Bandicoot 4. Fall Guys. Mario Kart Live, Home Circuit, Minecraft Dungeons, Paper Mario Origami King, Minecraft Dungeons. So this I've seen a lot of. This is like an isometric ARPG. That doesn't seem like a family game at all to me. Like Animal Crossing is way more of a family game. It's very chill, down to earth. Well, yeah, I guess you could say that too. And uh, it's not much like uh, drama or anything like that. I was actually thinking a fall guys might like win, but there's a lot of drama in fall guys if it's gonna be like best family. Just sit down with the family and play. And Crash Bandicoot 4, maybe, I don't know. Mario Kart Home Circuit. I have a feeling it's maybe going to become, or going to be Mario Kart, Live Home Circuit, or Animal Crossing New Horizons, actually. I don't know much about Paper Mario. But again, there might be like, <laughs> just full guys winning that too, so. I'm just going to go out on a limb. And for family play, Animal Crossing New Horizons. That's my prediction here for best family. Best fighting for best game design primarily around head-to-head -head combat. So I already know kind of my pick, but Grand Blue Fantasy versus Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate. Street Fighter 5 Champion Edition, One Punch Man. A hero nobody knows. Under Night in Birth X Late CLR. Interesting name there. Uh, I'm just gonna go with my prediction immediately. Mortal Kombat 11, I think, is gonna win this. For best fighting game. Best role playing. So this is kind of like my jam. Well, in general. But I might not have played any of the games, which I haven't actually. I haven't played any of these games. Uh, except there's one game I don't like here at all that I've seen. Like, I've seen all of these games, actually, gameplay and stuff like that. There's one I don't want to recommend, or uh, like, I'm never going to play. I know 100% I will never play, which is this Genshin Impact. <laughs> Genshin Impact, whatever. Because it's such a, like a gotcha game, microtrans microtransactions filled. Yeah. It's just built to catch whales, basically, that's why. I, I really don't like that type of business model, but it is what it is, a lot, a lot of people love it. 
so it's for the best game design with rich player character customization and progression including massively multiplayer experiences uh, yeah Final Fantasy 7 remake this is not really this is a remake so not a new game and uh, it's not the full game either so this is actually a misleading title in a way but I've heard oh, like a lot of people love it I'm not saying it's like a bad game or anything like that obviously so it might might as well win it actually has a pretty good chance I think of winning it but I haven't played it obviously Genshin, in, Genshin Impact I don't think it's gonna win I hope it doesn't win <laughs> Persona 5 Royal I've seen that a lot that might win. Wasteland 3. I've also seen a lot of that. And Yakuza Like a Dragon. I haven't seen too much of it, but I know a lot of people love it. As a JRPG turn based combat, ca combat kind of game. This is also like turn based combat, but the Western style RPG. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to go with like more of a biased prediction here. Not. not what I think is actually going to win, but I'm actually going to go with uh, Wasteland 3 for my prediction, not what I actually think is going to win. <laughs> yeah, Wasteland 3 there for b best role playing, best action adventure for best action adventure game, combining combat with traversal and puzzle solving. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Ghost of Tsushima, Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales, Ori and the Will of the Wisp, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, and The Last of Us Part 2. Okay, so I'm gonna go with like a, a non-biased prediction this time, and I'm gonna go straight to Ghost of Tsushima, I think. I, I just heard like tons of people love it. It's like... Uh, great third person like action adventure with RPG elements L lots of RPG elements I've heard so I'm, I'm actually gonna guess that from Sucker Punch it's a PS or PlayStation exclusive so that's my prediction here best action for best game in the action genre focused primarily on combat Doom Eternal, Hades, or Hades, Half-Life Alex, Neo 2, and Streets of Rage 4. Biased prediction, Doom Eternal. <laughs> but, like, it's either Doom Eternal or Hades, I think, that's gonna win this one. But I think Doom Eternal, because if any game of the, on, on this hell list focuses on combat primarily it's doomer <laughs> it's like combat 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 maybe a little bit of a break combat 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 <laughs> or the doom games in general it's just like combat combat you have you have like a small couple of minutes of uh, maybe exploring well technically you can explore and get secrets and stuff like that but if you just go from area to area, there's not much downtime. You just go straight to combat all the time. So Doom Eternal. This is interesting. Innovation in accessibility. Recognizing software and or hardware that is pushing the medium forward by adding features technology and content to help games be played and enjoyed by an even a wider audience so i actually know I exactly what what i'm gonna pick immediately and that is the last of us part two because i've seen so much like accessibility options for that game that th this genre or this category was actually just made for for the last of us part two i think there's just ah uh, let's see if the Last of Us Part 2 doesn't win any awards. Let's just make this 
innovation in accessibility category for it, so it will win no matter what. <laughs> like, ju just go look at, look it up. It has so many like uh, the Last of Us Part Two has so many like accessibility options. It's uh, kind of crazy, but it's also very nice. I gotta say that it's pretty. It looks pretty good, or it, it is really good to have tons of accessibility options like that. I'm all for that, uh, personally. So that's my prediction, The Last of Us Part 2. Best VR, AR game. So virtual reality or AR game. Um, which is, let's see, for the best game experience playable in virtual or augmented reality, irrespective of platform. Dreams. Hop of Alex, Marvel Iron Man VR, Star Wars Squadron, and Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. I actually think immediately this is both a biased prediction and a prediction of what I actually think will win. Half-Life Alex. Immediately, because so many people have said that this is their favorite VR game ever. People that already have like VR headsets or bought the Valve Index, for example. Valve Index is literally the best VR headset uh, created so far, as as far as I know. So if you buy the Valve Index and play Half-Life Alex, I think that's like the best VR game experience you're gonna have, ever have. So I'm gonna go with that. Half-Life Alex for the best VR AR game. Best community support, recognize a game for outstanding community support, transparency and responsiveness, inclusive of social media activity and game updates, patches. Epic Legends, Destiny 2, Fall Guys, Fortnite, No Man's Sky, Valorant. Uh, I think Fall Guys. Like, I don't even follow the Fall Guys account on Twitter. But I know a lot of people that probably do, right? So it just shows up on my timeline anyway. And they just update, update, update. Uh, come with jokes, memes. Uh, another update patch here. And they talk to the community all the time. So, or they did anyway. I don't know if they do. They probably do still. I'm gonna go with Fall Guys here. Best mobile game. Okay, so now I'm probably gonna be not predicting it with a biased opinion. Okay, I'm I'm gonna pr be predicting towards what a mobile game actually is for the best game playable on a mobile device. Among Us, Call of Duty Mobile, Genshin Impact, Legends of Runeterra, Pokemon Cafe Mix. So I never heard about the Pokemon Cafe Mix ever. I've heard about every other game. But I, I actually think... I think anime fans is too strong. So they're gonna vote. And the criti critics are also probably gonna choose Genshin, Genshin Impact. That's my prediction. Not because I want to, but, the, but what, I, what I think will win. I don't really play mobile games. <laughs> so, but I think this will win. For sure, it, uh, it has a huge fa fan base. So that's Genshin Impact for best mobile game. Prediction. Best indie game. Uh, for outstanding creative and technical achievement in a game made outside traditional publisher system. Carrion, Fall Guys, Hades. Spelunky 2, Spiritfarer. Fall Guys is here too. That has to be Fall Guys. I don't see any of the others except for maybe Hades. That can... Uh, uh, maybe Hades actually can uh, compete a little bit.
I'm gonna say Hades actually on this prediction Hades for best indie like it, it was either Fall Guys or Hades on, on this one for me as a prediction so I'm gonna go prediction Hades best indie best ongoing awarded to a game for outstanding development of ongoing content that evolves the player experience over time. Apex Legends, Destiny 2, Call of Duty Warzone, Fortnite and No Man's Sky. Hmm. The only game I've played that is like newer that has like ongoing support is uh, is the division 2 but that's not even on the list so i guess it doesn't really have good <laughs> ongoing support <laughs> which makes sense but i don't know actually maybe no man's sky because no man's sky ha ha has had like a when it came out it was like going down into the cellar like complete trash and then it had like a character arc a positive character arc like up an upwards trend and it's probably still going up for hello games I'm, I'm just gonna guess no man's sky prediction no man's sky for best on game going personally Games for impact, for a thought-provoking provo game with pro-social meaning or message. Uh, let's see. If found, Kentucky Route Zero TV Edition. Spirit Fair, tell me why, through the darkest of times. So only one I've actually seen and heard about a, lo a lot more than the others is tell me why. So I'm, I'm just going to guess that. Because it... Uh, what I've seen from it, it actually has pretty good like pro-social meaning and message and uh, it's thought-provoking for, for a lot of people from Don't, Don't Nod Entertainment and Xbox Game Studios yeah, that's one of those studios that Microsoft bought straight up so I'm, I'm gonna go prediction, games for impact, tell me why Best performance awarded to an individual for vo voice over acting, motion and or performance capture. So we have two in The Last of Us Part 2, <laughs> so they have a pretty good chance here. Ashley Johnson as Ellie, Laura Bailey as Abby, Tasuke Chui as Jin Sakai, Logan Cunningham as Hades. Naji Jeter as Miles Morales. That's a new uh, Sparman game here. That is PlayStation 5 exclusive. It might be PS4 too. I don't know. I don't have PS4 or PS5. I'm um, actually, since I played, I did play Last of Us Part 1, or Last of Us, The Last of Us, and I, I really like that game. I'm gonna go with Ashley Johnson uh, as Ellie. As my pr my prediction here. Because I do remember she was top notch in uh, The Last of, Last of Us 1. Yeah, I might be, again, I might be wrong <laughs> about the predictions. I'm just gonna do throw it out there and see after the Game Awards what. I got right and what I got wrong. Yeah, best audio design. Doom Eternal, Half-Life Alex, Ghost of Tsushima, Resident Evil 3, Last of Us Part 2. So recognizing the best in-game and audio and sound design. Uh, audio and sound design. I have a feeling That The Last of Us Part 2 is going to win this one, actually, for best audio design in general. So that's my prediction of, of best audio design. 
Best Score and Music Doom Eternal, Final Fantasy 7 Remake, Hades Ori and the Will of the Wisps, Dresses Part 2 So this is Score and Music Which is different from Order Design I'm gonna go with a bias pick here For me personally, which is Do would be Doom Eternal Composed by Mick Gordon <laughs> That's my prediction here of best score and music. Outstanding music, inclusive of score, original song, and or licensed soundtrack. Yep. Do me all. Best art direction. Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ghost of Tsushima, Hades, Ori and the Will of Wisp. Last of Us Part 2. So, The Last of Us Part 2 and Ghost of Tsushima is more realistic than this, this, and this. Like these have like more art type graphics. So that kind of eliminates these two for me anyway. I mean, I might be wrong like again. But I think Hades will probably win that one. It's a very interesting art direction. And looks pretty good. Like, looks very, very nice in a different way. So I, I think Hades is gonna take this one. Best narrative, Thirteen Sentinels, Aegis Rim. I never, I have never heard about that actually. Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ghost of Tsushima, Hades, and Last of Us Part Two. Outstanding storytelling and narrative development in a game. Uh, that might be. I have no idea about this, but Ghost of Tsushima. I'm gonna guess Ghost of Tsushima here. Yeah, that's my prediction for best narrative. Best game direction award for outstanding creative vision and innovation in game direction and design. Uh, I don't know, I guess. The Last of Us Part 2 there. I'm just, that's just a random prediction. Get best game direction. And now we come to Game of the Year. Recognizing a game that delivers the absolute best experience across all creative and technical fields. Doom Eternal, Final Fantasy 7 Remake. Ghost of Tsushima, Hades. Animal Crossing New Horizons. And last is part two. So I'm actually surprised that Animal Crossing's I Crossing is here, but that's fine, of course. But this is going to be no non-biased uh, prediction. If I, if I was biased, it would have been Doom Eternal, <laughs> but uh, for a prediction. But I'm I'm going to do non-biased prediction. I actually think will win. I have a feeling either Ghost of Tsushima or The Last of Us Part 2 is gonna win. Game of the Year. But. Hey, this might have a good chance too. So, those three. I'm actually gonna go out on a limb and predict. Uh, Hades or go to Shishima. <laughs> hmm. At least I eliminated down to two. I think I think I'll go with um, either Hades or go to Shishima. That's hard actually. Even though I didn't really play in it. Like, I've seen a lot of the gameplay. Of both. I guess... Ghost of Tsushima. I was really unsure there. Predi prediction. Locked in. Ghost of Tsushima for Game of the Year 2020. That's my prediction there. I was really close to picking Hades. But yes, that's my prediction. Ghost of Tsushima for Game of the Year at the Game Awards 2020.